Welcome to Rocks Talks. It's good to see y'all. It's Friday. Uh, today we're going to talk about an ex- an interesting response I got in the dance class that I went to um, for the first time at the Lifetime location I went to yesterday. It was interesting. We're also going to talk about the Stanley Cups and the drama, what they have led in them, what's going on, and finding certainty in the un. Certain. Okay. Um, I want to say thank you so much for. I want to make sure I get this everything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So um, I want to first say thank you for listening. I've been getting messages from y'all, which has been great, and uh, getting feedback. One being, hey, don't cover your face with your microphone. I think it's from my. I know it's from my radio days because in radio you kind of like eat the mic and no one can see you, so you're like this, and then it's just, I'm hiding my face. Also, I got the, hey, why don't you wear makeup? <laughs> Because it's early in the morning. Early in the morning. Some people, I know they do their podcast that's like a daily podcast the night before. Right now, what's working and what I'm feeling about feeling good about is waking up and like letting it all out, informing you in the morning. So it's in real time that day. So uh, the odds of me doing my makeup at five or six in the morning are slim to not going to happen. Maybe in the future. Like you can actually see the line from my sleep cap right there today. I thought that was interesting. Okay, so I yesterday I was telling you I went I went to the gym. I spent the morning at the gym, and I went to um, the day I did yoga first, which I have to say that coming from Orange County, I have been spoiled because our lifetime is not even a year old. So I like expect to go into the yoga studio area and have like two yoga studios. There's only been one. Everyone I've gone to, and I'm like, you gotta get your snobby stuff out of this. Like, stop that nonsense, Roxanne. But I, but I have to say the dance classes they're jamming and they are packed. So I go to dance and I'm do 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 in the front row because this is what I know. This is what I do. I used to teach jazzercise for 15 years, so I'm used to being on the stage. And even after that, I like the front row because I really don't care what anyone else is doing in dance. I truly don't. I don't want to. I don't look at them. I don't care. But I want to be able to see the instructor and I don't want to be distracted. So for me, the front row, if you've ever danced with me any dance class through years, you know, the, the front row is my jam. So I get there and I'm standing. There are no numbers. So I'm like, excuse me, the instructor's like, no, but I can help you. I'm like, there are no numbers. For some reason, the numbers have been rubbed off. So they, they help me find my spot. And I'm smacked up. I'd forgotten that I was like smack dab in the front row when I can be this way I'm going to be. So the instructor comes up to me. She's like, Hi. I don't know you. I'm like, oh, I'm so-and-so. I'm Roxanne. She's like, okay. She said, it, have you been here? I'm like, it's my first time. She said, and you're choosing the front row? Now, typically, I would be like, good for you. You're choosing the front row. She was very concerned. She's like, have you ever done a class before? I thought, are you about to send me to the back? I'm like, well, yes. I said, no. Th- I said, no. This is my first dance class at this one. But I came from Orange County. And she's like, okay. I go, I did a dance gym class at another at Lifetime, like in Tempe the other day. I said, and, because she had a shirt on that said, turn it and turn it up is like a type of fitness um, that, for example, big Rick, I have, to, I have to say right, big kid Rick was trained with that. So I said, oh, are you with turn it up? She's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I took Rick's class on sun- Sunday. And she's like, okay. She's like, I was there yesterday. She still was kind of like sus that I would be in the front row. I'm thinking, lady, look at me. I can move. I might not be in the shape that I'm usually in, but girl, I can move. Anyhow, I did a great job. I have to say, like, I did a great job. The class, they were... It reminded me of an old jazz jazz class because they had people whoop, 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 whoop. They were like, hey, oh, like the whole time. Uh, class was good. She was good. A lot of booty shaking. They like to do a lot of booty shaking and put your hands down on the ground and like shake, 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 shake and put stick that, pop that booty out. That's a, that's a popular move with them. Uh, but it was fun and I will definitely go back again at the end. She was like, you were so brave to be in the front row. I was, in the, I was thinking, girl, you mean to say I was so good for being in the front row. I got to fix her vernacular. Anyhow, so... I found that yesterday was just chocked full of uncertainty. Uh, With me transitioning, obviously there's uncertainty there, but a lot of things, you know, sometimes you're reminded, hey, you might not be the only one controlling this story or whatever it might be. And it wasn't just with me, but with others in my life. And it just reminded me, I took a reflection moment and I have an ability to be calm in a storm. You know, everyone has their like, their great point and their great space. And I find like in pressure cooker moments, I'm like, chills a cucumber. You want me to be there for you because I can make, take action, do the thing, all the things. So when uncertainty doesn't bother me, like I find the certainty and the uncertainty because I have faith that it is going to be okay and everything's going to rock it out. However, I see that with others, that uncertainty can be scary. And I was talking to a good friend who has just gone through a 
it's at an uncertain point is now in an uncertainty. And they were talking about just like how, how their body was, was revolt, like was, was reacting to this uncertainty and how like things were, you know, just the stomach, you know, all the things I don't have to give you get it. And I said to them, I said, you know, this is actually, I think I've never been in labor, but I think it's similar to labor where I think that if you accept the journey and accept that this is part of like this birth, this labor, this pain is part of this beautiful miracle coming to pass, then it may not hurt as much. Again, I am speaking from a mind, I don't know, uh, not from personal experience, but I think that when, when your body or when your mind, like when you feel this like ah uh, uncertainty and it is like your body is doing the purge is what I called it for them. You got to lean into that and go, okay, this is my body purging, getting rid of what does not serve me so that I am prepared for the next thing. I'm ready. This uncertain time is for me to form. And I think that when we get scared or anxious because our body is like in knots and it's come out in all the ends, that is when we kind of, we're fighting the process and perhaps we shouldn't always, we should try and lean in and not fight the process. That feeling of anxiousness is not always a bad thing. That feeling of anxiousness is working through certain things. I'm, and so I'm just saying, if you're in a moment of uncertainty, which I feel like a lot of people are right now, try and find the certain in the uncertainty. And by certain, I mean, find the, maybe the joy. I'm finding the joy right now. But, but perhaps find the, uh, the calm. Understand that this is, if you understand that this is part of the process, then it's not so uncertain. It's kind of like when you drive somewhere that you've never been before and it's like, oh, this feels so long. But on the way back, like, oh, this is not long at all because you know the process. You understand the process. You got to turn here and turn there and make a U-turn and go there and there to get to where you need to go. But the f- at the beginning, it feels uncertain. If we find the certain and the certainty, then it's a little bit easier. Then, it, then we can take it all in and appreciate all of it. And the other thing, you can see the light from my computer because I didn't want to forget what I wanted to talk about. Oh, Stanley. Stanley. You know, it is always, we always know there's a rise before a fall, right? We always know that that hot thing, the Cabbage Patch doll, the Tickle Me Elmo. I don't know why I'm going to toys. The thing that was so cool at some point is going to lose its cool or going to be attacked. And... What's interesting about Mr. Stanley, or is it Mrs. Stanley? Stanley. Um, that is that, well, I saw that there is a little thing that came out saying that there's lead in your Stanley water bottle. What? There is lead in this thing. Let's talk more about this. Apparently, at the bottom, and I don't even want to take it off because I'm one of those who has a boot, and now I'm a little bit even happier that I do. I have a boot because it, you know, the, the paint can scratch, scratch off. And once you realize that happens, you're like, I don't want that to happen again. See that right there? However, apparently at the bottom here, you can kind of see it, but if I, it's Stanley. We don't do Stanley's because they're functional. There's a little circle here, and apparently there's like a pellet of lead in it. Allegedly, it's supposed to help like suction in, that lead helps suction in the cup. But there is lead. Now, they say the lead does not harm. We're not drinking it. It's not harming us unless... You, like, damage the cup, and then it, like, jars the lead. I think it might be, like, asbestos, right? I, listen, I'm not I'm not an expert on asbestos. But I think I remember, like, asbestos was fine-ish in the ceilings as long as you didn't, like, poke it. And when you poked it, it was like, and then all the bad stuff happened. Is it like that? Because if it's like that, I don't know. I'm curious to see what's going to happen to Stanley. Now that you know, and you can look it up, that Stanley has lead, a lead pellet there, does it make you – dislike your Stanley more or does it make you an even more Stanley stan? Because there are some people saying, leave my Stanley alone. I'm drinking more water than before. So at least I'm picking my poison. I'm like, mm. now I'm going to do a little research because I know that there's some things out there talking about which ones do, which water bottles have lead and which don't. Uh, I've heard that, what's the name of it? Oh, I can't remember. It's on the tippy top. Hydro Flask has no lead. I've heard that, is it Yeti might have lead as well too? Don't quote me. I am going to do some look-sees though because I'm interested 
because that might be the like this could be the lead coffin no the lead nail in the stanley coffin this could be the down slope have we hit the height of stanley i don't know i gotta tell you some of those colors make me want another one i like like that that clayish color is very pretty so if you have a stanley i'd love to know does this does this or if you want a stanley even does this make you go mm, make things that make you go hmm, maybe i don't want a stanley in the words of arsenio hall or does it make you go like, hey, as long as the lead is not bothering me, I'm not going to bother it. I will say, if you're still doing the stand, if you're standing in the Stanley, you might want to get one of these boots. I think that the boots are going to go. They call this like a Stanley boot because you need a lot of accessories for your Stanley. I have a feeling the Stanley boot sales are going to go through the roof because of this lead nonsense. And who was the whistleblower who brought out the lead? I, it, I don't know. That's interesting. Anyhow, I'm just inquiring minds. That people are going to be talking about that, so I want you to know about that. Uh, the last thing, I think that's everything. Oh, I am loving owning my own time. I'm loving not being beholden to a clock and not being beholden to having to be places that I may not want to be necessarily when I have to be there. I love it. Do I get up every morning? Yes. I probably put on more makeup. Not that I have anything on right now. But I've made my face up more this week <laughs> than I have in a long time. I'm not kidding with you. So it feels very f fresh. I know that that's not for everyone. Some people want that, uh, that consistency of a clock. But if you're someone who doesn't love consistency, can you just maybe think for a second that maybe it's not for you? We spend a lot of time thinking that we should be a certain way because most people are. Just because you're not like that doesn't mean that something's wrong with you. It just means you're different. And being different is, uh, Lord Lord knows, I am different in so many different ways. And I'm okay with it. When I was little, I identified by being different because I was obviously in black. I was left-handed, which I'm the only left-hander in my family. I'm bow-legged. Like, those things I would celebrate. I was the only one in my family um, at the time. Maybe my mom might have had glasses. But I was nearsighted and I had them since I was six. Like, these are the things that I was like, I embraced my differences. I think that at some point in time and probably more and more now because we're so connected-ish with people because we can see all the things on social and all the places that we feel like we have to be like everyone else. And I want to encourage you that it's okay if you are different. It doesn't make, it doesn't mean something's wrong with you. In fact, if you do any like human design-ish research and like look into your human design, any of that, You'll know that like there, yes, most people are a certain way, but there's a, there's a happy minority of us, it, what, 20, I do my math, maybe like 30-ish percent, correct me, HD, HD uh, gurus, that are not. But obviously, if most people are a certain way, you will feel like you have to conform to that. And at some point, you will conform to, to that, most likely. S the world will help you conform because being alike just makes things easier for the masses, but not for those of us who are different. I think when we're little, we embrace the difference. Like I said, I embraced the differences I had with people, even people in my family. I loved it. As you get older, it gets a little bit harder to do that because you are socialized. And I hope that as we come full circle, which if you think about it, the circle of life, we come full circle in so many ways, right? As we get older, we become like children again until, you know, if you, if we're lucky enough to live out our life until we we're way, way gray, um, we become ch like childlike again. And so maybe th in that journey of aging and becoming childlike, we find and we realize that our differences are actually a good thing. And we go back and embrace those differences. I find sometimes I yearn for those differences. It's, I'm kind of like nostalgic about being proud of being different. And it's not that I'm not proud now, but I think that some of those differences I've learned to tamper down or water down because they were so different. Well, my friends, in my peony era, the differences are going to come out loud and proud, and I'm very excited about that because I'm going to celebrate myself for being myself and I celebrate you as well too because we're all different in some way oh I need to take a sip of my Stanley he's a little he's a little parched 
Uh, I think it's because I'm going on a roll. This is something to think about as we go into the weekend. I appreciate you so much. If you're just watching the first time, binge. They're short. They're like 16 minutes or less. And I will be putting up this week's on to the official podcast. Um, if you like, you listen to the, on Spotify or Apple or wherever. I'll be putting those up this weekend. So this week's has not up there yet, but it'll get up there. But in the meantime, you have YouTube. And I want to shout out to y'all. Tammy, I, I want to shout out to you. She said, she's like, I'm getting used to this new platform being on YouTube, but I'm liking it. And I really appreciate you joining me here and uh, daring to be different. All right, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. I appreciate you. Go be great. And I'll see you on Monday. Bye, everybody.